What is up, YouTube? I am back with another video today. Uh, I am trying to make content Monday, Wednesday, Friday, if possible. Um, I'm not entirely sure if that will be completely possible. I'm trying to bring back the channel to what it used to be back in 2016-17, back when I was in college and a lot more passionate about Pokemon. I'm still just as passionate, but that my time constraints have gotten larger as time has gone on. So I want to try to bring back um, meta breakdowns when events come back before a big event. Um, I want to try to bring back interviews on a lesser scale. Nothing crazy. I don't want to like steal other content creators' ideas with interviews, but maybe like a homie interview. Um, maybe have them do their tournament breakdown like I used to do. Um, try to put deck profiles out. Um, I don't really intend on doing gameplay as much um, because it does eat up a lot more time with the editing and everything I have to do. Um, so that would take a bigger commitment than doing like a 10 minute 15 minute deck profile, which is what I'm going to try to do from here on out, like deck profiles, um, to put out more consistent content. Um, yeah, and that's kind of what I'm trying to do. I'll try to bring everything back. Online tournaments, I haven't been playing. I haven't been participating in as much, but if I will be, then I will try to put those upload matches online because I'd like to have that content on. I know they're not my most viewed or like most um, trafficked um, things, but I like to have that as options um so without further ado i'm going to jump in to post rotation rotation has now officially occurred on ptcgo therefore we have a new standard format we are now playing team up uh to darkness ablaze i believe i could be wrong i prob i'm pretty sure i'm right but okay but we lost a lot of pieces um that let a lot of decks flow consistently mewtwo lost a couple of pieces important pieces like a skateboard um Stinger GX, uh, you lost uh, Silvalli for the Eternatus matchup. So you lost a couple pieces, but not all hope is lost. Mewtwo is still a very, very strong deck. It's one of my favorite decks um, for the whole season. You guys have seen multiple Mewtwo, Mewtwo profiles across the season. Um, it's my Vespaquin Flareon. Basically, I get to play uh, use attackers out of a discard. It's a very similar concept, you know. Um, so how could I not love a deck that does all that for me? So... Um, if you guys have made it this far, also in the video, please make sure to subscribe to see more content. Make sure to like, make sure to leave a comment. The engagement really helps out. I know it's kind of a shameless plug, but please, I would appreciate anything. Um, yeah, without further ado, let's jump into the Mewtwo deck. So I want to start with the support Pokemon before I get into our myriad of attackers. Um, first, we have the three Mewtwo. You know these guys, this guy exists. That's just, he's the cornerstone of the deck. He has perfection. He can copy anything and everything. Pretty broken. And then we've got our support Pokemon. We have one Crobat and three Dedenne. The formula used to be four Dedenne um, and nothing else because, you know, Dedenne would already eat up a bin spot. But you need the Dedenne to continue drawing through your deck and kind of go as fast as possible. But now with the addition of Crobat, we can kind of mitigate that fourth Dedenne into something like not being, not having to discard the Welder that's already in my hand and just finding the Fire Energies or not having to discard, I, mean, I don't know, maybe um, my last Mewtwo, my last Cherish Ball, like something I really need to continue the flow of the game. There's one Eldegoss because I think this card is super broken. Um, it's quick ball searchable. You want to get that boss back to end the game. You want to get that welder to end the game. Um, he really offers all those options. Um, we have one Zigzagoon to get that one damage counter where we need it. Um, kind of offset the game. There's three Drachi in this deck, but as we'll go through, I don't play Scoop Up Net, and we did lose a Skateboard, so all I have is the Force Switch to kind of make him work. I don't play the Bird Keeper or anything, so I'm a little bit hesitant about playing Drachi in the build, but I've Ever since I switched to the Drachi build, I've been kind of having a lot of success, so I can't really, um, I can't really fault not wanting to play Drachi for myself. So it's more of a, it might be a comfort is a crutch type of deal card here for me, but I really do like Drachi, and I think that it could make a lot of things happen. But I think with only four switch, you can only afford to really bench one Drachi or two Drachis in the entire game, so three might be excessive. But you do need that one Drachi to kind of set up and pivot, so I do like having that one Drachi. At the very least, it's been good for me without scoop up nets or whatever, but I think it's fine, so I'm gonna keep it. So now we're gonna go to over a myriad of attackers, and if you know me, I've played Mewtwo for a long time. My attackers are always funky. Things don't make sense sometimes. Incineroar, that might be the card that makes some of the most sense for you guys. Crushing Punch, really good. Special Energy is semi prevalent in the metagame right now. Um, 130 is a good number for setting up two shots on a lot of things. You can go 130 into the 230 for the following Zard, or 130 into Outrage for the following turn as well. Um, Darkest Tornado is the best GX attack in the game with the current metagame and how much damage things do without one-shotting. 
So I really do like having Darkest Tornado in the deck. They got it LGX with Venom Shot. Now we're in a situation where the metagame has gotten to the point where some of the things in the active are too big to one shot. So our game plan sometimes is going to have to be to Venom Shot at the Dene and Venom Shot a Crobat with a ping with a Zigzagoon and then take out one big attacker or one big threat. So we are also playing the ADP concept of snipe the support Pokemon dot deck, but um, we can also have one big GX attack to deal with one big threat, uh, if that makes any sense, and then we have to deal with we have to find our prizes somewhere else. So Venom Shot becomes really, really good at doing that. We have Rish Summon Charizard, Flare Strike 230, really good attack. Uh, it's a very consistent, very solid damage. Double Blaze with 300, but I don't ever want to commit that 600 to make that attack um, because I have Family Zard if I want to use that GX attack anyway. So 230 is our consistent damage output that we want to hit. Um, we don't need to one-shot anything anymore in this format really without using a GX attack. So the two shots are fine with me. Victini V is a card um, that has been really good since it came out. Spreading Flames is pretty insane. Um, energy Burst also really good for dealing um, with setting up two shots, and it's a low energy commitment uh, attacker. Uh, I have Volcanion because I do like how Volcanion with Flare Starter can pretty much, if you go second, set up your entire board. Um, two to one, Mewtwo, one to another, or you can go all three onto one, set up for the Family Zard turn two. Uh, without having to rely on a welder that turn or the next turn you simply just need an attachment and a volcanian and a way to get into it so basically like a quick fall volcanian and a switch and you have that combo to kind of set up a attacker um so i really like having this crutch to lean on um it might not be insane but it's it's slow and consistent family zard 300 can't argue with that pretty insane um here's where my attackers get a little funky uh, I'm opting for a Psychic build as the uh, as opposed to some other builds you may have seen. So I have Gengar Mimic QGX, um, which has Poltergeist, which could be a late, late game cleanup attack where your opponent can't really get rid of all these items or supporters or whatever they have in their deck. Um, or you can catch them off guard for an early game knockout or like something against like ADPization where they are recklessly zationing a lot of the time early game. Maybe they play cards like Turbo Patch. Um, a lot of supporters, a lot of stadiums, you know, whatever. All of a sudden you just Poltergeist and they don't expect it. You just need five items on something like a Zation, six items on something like an ADP, or trainer card, sorry. Um, and all of a sudden, you have swung the game in your favor. And Horror House is another really, really, really good GX attack. If you are behind, it's really a good stall tactic. Um, if you get the two energies on there, uh, with the two Psychics, you can reset your full hand to try to make something happen. Um, if you don't, no harm, no foul. I uh, have it in there to kind of be like a pause let me gain tempo i get two turns in a row you don't get any i lose my big attack but i can continue to play the game um i wanted to have iron rule in here for the same effect on cobalion gx but i figured that gengar mimikyu having a big attack would also serve as a very good purpose um then we have indeedy um the the 20 damage heal is pretty nice if something doesn't one shot you um psychic is also a really good attack um that can play into like a senti scorch or two shot things um also really good in the mirror uh if they're not playing like a jirachi or something uh and you can just pop it and then continue if they're playing a jirachi then you can just play the big one shot uh, hubbub game um this guy he's back you know him you love him he's one of my favorite attackers in the deck muck muck gx i actually kind of had put him aside but after watching henry brand's stream a couple days ago a couple nights ago yeah um world current world champion reigning 2019 champ henry brand the man who piloted perfection mewtwo to a world championship win he was talking about how a lot of eternatus lists do not play an answer to nasty goo mix uh, because they don't play switch they usually play scoop up net air balloon um maybe one bird keeper something like that but a lot of decks don't play an answer to nasty goo mix so if you get nasty goo mix on something big like an eternatus all of a sudden it will die going back into their turn but you get a free turn to snipe something on the bench and that at that point you can pretty much go up five prizes without really doing anything um and if they don't like win the game the very next turn you could win or you probably have taken a prize somewhere along that path so that five turn that five prize turn can be what just wins you the game so credit to henry um really like the card i've always been a huge fan of it so i'm glad to see it back in prominence and now we're gonna go to our items and stuff so when I build Mewtwo, I like to have fours across the board if possible. I like to have as many fours, as many consistency cards, as many just get through my deck, get what I need to get, welder every turn, boss every turn, get my attackers every turn kind of thing. So we have four Cherish Bowl, four Quick Bowl. 
this is the deck that can still, again, make the most use out of Cherish Bowl in this current format, in my opinion. We go into Poke Gear. Poke Gear is a card we haven't seen since LAIC, where I played it last. Um, I'm pretty sure Poke Gear now becomes, again, a very good card at finding these welders or bosses, whatever I'm digging for. It gives me that extra little bit of reach that I want to find. I have one reset stamp. I know one reset stamp isn't a lot. Uh, one reset stamp has always worked for me formulaically, but if Jirachis do end up making the cut, like if I end up cutting the three Jirachis, I will probably end up putting in more reset stamp and more big charm is like probably where like at least two of those spots are going to end up going. The last spot, I don't know where I would put in, maybe a third boss, um, maybe a fourth to Dene, I don't know. I would want to find some consistency somewhere across the board. Um, but for the time being, we do have Jirachi, and with the Crowbat, we can always ensure that we can potentially hold that stamp for later in the game. Um, we have four switch. That's, that's our only switching cards. Um, okay, if I do cut three Jirachi, I'd go to second bird, second stamp, second big charm, and probably a bird keeper. Um, but other than that, this is what we have. Three hearth. I've always played three hearth, never four. That's, I think it's fine. Two boss, four welder. I think that's very consistent. I have one big charm, but I do want to find space for another if I can, because big charm is our only answer to the Eternatus matchup. Um, they don't have Evatol Jax anymore, so they have to take a big knockout with the 300 on that, and if they use three Zigzagoon pings on it, um, they're left with a potential of five more for the entire game, and the odds that they didn't waste a ping here or there, or prize a piece, is highly unlikely. So if we have to make them burn that, and then we can nasty goo mix or something, and play the game from there, we can win the game. Um, but it is like something we do, like a stamp big charm and kind of hope that that one Mewtwo can stick enough to win the game. We have four Horror Energy. Horror Energy, um, is really good for getting that extra little bit of damage that I need, um, on things like Eternatus, on things like Sempty Scorch, things that I can't actually one shot. Um, yeah, it gives me that little bit of edge, uh, makes it so I don't need the scoop up nets with the Zigzagoon. Um, uh, and then eight fire. I want a ninth also, but... I can't be too greedy with how much energy I play because a handful of energy does Mewtwo no good with no Elder. So that is my post-rotation Mewtwo deck profile. I will be playing it a little bit more on ladder, um, kind of refining it going from there. I'll try to get an upload up on Wednesday, but if you guys did enjoy the video, please remember to like, subscribe, comment. Helps my engagement a ton. Um, I will be trying to make more videos as we continue. I know there's nothing really to watch right now in quarantine time, but I've been watching more and more stuff on YouTube and kind of been getting inspired a little bit. So... Um, I'm going to try my best to put out some quality content for you guys. Um, along the way, I'm feeling good, looking good. Life's good. Hope you guys are all doing well. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see more of, more old, like similar to my old content that I've already done. Any new content ideas you have, I would really, really appreciate that. So thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in a...